I pleasure to welcome uh, everyone uh, to our following lecture organized by our <coughs> international research platform Contested Legacies. Uh, today's lecture uh, will be given by our colleague from Jagiellonia University, Professor Karolina Golemo. Uh, the title of her lecture is Decolonizing Memory and Spaces, uh, Voices of Afro-Descendants in Contemporary Portugal. Uh, Karolina Golemo is a socialist of culture and assistant professor at the Institute of Intercultural Studies at the Jagiellonia University. Uh, her research interests focus on the cultural diversity in Italy and in Iberian Peninsula, as well as on artistic expression of migrants, music in intercultural relations and postcolonial relations from the cultural perspective. Uh, she has published uh, four monographs and several papers um, uh, relating uh, these issues. Uh, in particular, uh, last year, uh, she um, co-edited two uh, books, um, Remarking Culture and Music Spaces, Affects Infrastructures uh, Features, and uh, the second book entitled Spaces of Diversity, Polish Music Festivals in a Changing uh, Society. Um, currently, she is conducting a research of African cultural heritage in Portugal and its interpretation. Uh, interpretations. And um, the title of her uh, today's lecture is connected to this issue. Indeed, uh, she will speaking to us about contemporary artistic interpretation of colonialism created by Afro descendants in Portugal. Uh, during her lecture, she will explore um, the problem of the functioning of Afro-descendants uh, in uh, the contemporary Portug uh, Portuguese society. Um, in fact, these issues can be analyzed um, from different perspectives, both from uh, a post-colonial perspective uh, and uh, in the broader context uh, of intercultural, complex intercultural uh, relations, including issue related to colonial past, um, but uh, also um, related to racism, uh, all contemporary forms of racial discrimination. Uh, traditionally, um, after the lecture, uh, we are going to dedicate 15-20 minutes uh, for discussion and uh, of course you can write your uh, questions uh, question in the chat. And now I give the floor to Carolina. Carolina, please, the floor mm -hmm. is yours. Uh, Joanna, thank you very much uh, for this uh, introduction. And thank you indeed for uh, this opportunity uh, to be with you and to share some uh, reflections on, uh, on contested legacies in the context of Portugal. Um, as Joanna said, I would like to describe uh, some examples of uh, contemporary narratives uh, concerning the Portuguese colonialism, uh, focusing on the context of post-memory, post-memory practices related to um, artistic expression. Uh, so uh, it will be related both to uh, memory um, and art. Um, I would like to stress this link. And the main point of reference for the reflections I would like to present is the current uh, debate in Portugal on two monuments of Lisbon, the Portuguese capital. The first uh, was, uh, sorry, I just forgot uh, to uh, share the screen. Maybe this is the time after this short introduction to show you uh, my slides. Uh, let me uh, know if uh, everything is okay, if you can yes. see. The presentation, yeah. 
Yes. So, uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is the uh, the title of the colonizing memory and spaces, uh, voices of Afro descendants in contemporary Portugal. Uh, and I have to uh, underline also that when I say Afro descendants, I mean uh, the people of African origin um, coming from the former colonies of Portugal, because, of course, in contemporary Portuguese society, we have also migrants from other African countries and their descendants that were not linked by this colonial uh, ties. Yeah. So, uh, and on the first slide, you see a fragment of the Azulejos, the a panel of the ceramic tiles from a, a Palacio da Fronteira, as I remember well, from Lisbon, uh, showing uh, uh, African slaves. Uh, it comes from the 17th century, and there is a lot of manifestations like this one in uh, in uh, uh, Portuguese uh, Lisbon urban spaces. So, uh, going back to what I said at the beginning, I would like to focus on two uh, on two monuments of Lisbon. The first one. Uh, was created a few decades ago and is still one of the most uh, renowned sites in the city. And the second is a monument in Spe, let's say, uh, which uh, on the initiative of uh, its uh, uh, originators is intended to express the voices of Afro-descendants, so uh, the people that we are going to focus on uh, today. The examples of these two uh, memorials, these two monuments, um, illustrates uh, how different memories, um, interpretations of the past, may consist in and uh, may coexist in the social and urban um, urban space um, of Lisbon. Uh, just uh, to uh, close this short short introduction, I want to need to say that uh, probably you know that we are now uh, in a uh, decade of uh, the people of African descent established by UNESCO in uh, 2015, and it is going coming uh, approaching the end because it will last until uh, 2024. And so, on the occasion of this initiative, this decade, uh, new initiatives uh, and projects have appeared in Portugal uh, um, that were aimed not only at combating racism and intolerance um, nowadays, but also at promoting African cultures in a broad sense. Yeah, so. Um, in uh, in my in my uh, reflections, I, I would I, I will uh, try to refer to both of this. Yeah, so uh, this problem of racism, discrimination, but also uh, promoting the richness of the African cultures uh, uh, contemporary. Uh, so some key notions uh, that I wanted to uh, make a reference to uh, while talking about this mediated experience of colonialism and post-memory practices. The first term is, of course, uh, post-memory, uh, proposed by Marianne Hirsch, uh, that can be referred to various contexts of intergenerational transmission of trauma and knowledge about trauma. And it was, of course, initially applied uh, to the analysis of the uh, descendants of Holocaust survivors and victims, and also more broadly, representatives of the generation that uh, didn't experience the Holocaust, the Shoah, but did, did not witness it, but grew up in environment marked by stories uh, about Holocaust. And over time, this term post-memory has expanded uh, its meaning. At, and now, as its author herself claims, it may be used in relation to other contexts, such as wars, act of massive uh, violence, slavery and colonialism. Uh, it refers to people who has not experienced firsthand painful events, but who feel an emotional bond with them and struggle with experiences inherited from their ancestors. So difficult events affect their lives so strongly that they influence their perception of both the past and the present. And this is what I will try to uh, show using these examples uh, mentioned at the beginning. So. Uh, these traumatic events from the past that are transmitted intergenerationally, uh, not only by family narratives, but also through cultural texts, public discourse, public images, media discourses, live in these people as form of a cultural memory. And at the personal level, uh, it can evoke individual feelings and reaction, reactions and also some artistic uh, manifestations. 
Uh, contemporary forms of post-memory may be used to rework, redefine, and bring distant events closer to feel them more at the more personal level. Um, it can be assumed that people from former African colonies who were born and grew up uh, at the time when the colonial system no longer functioned experienced colonialism in this mediated way. Yeah, we can also talk about this med mediated experience, inherited trauma. Uh, or received history. Yeah, what is important is the term, uh, the, the notion of the living connection, which was uh, proposed by Eva Hoffman, also in the context of Holocaust, but nowadays it's in use in other contexts too. Uh, so, um, um, postcolonial perspective means today uh, more than a simple talking back. Yeah, it implies the operation of transformation, contamination that affects the different agents, organizations, and ideas. And it is also so this context of post memory and post colonial perspective are uh, intertwined uh, in the case of Afro descendants uh, in Portugal. Um, what Marianne Hirsch said about post memory and art. Uh, well, uh, it is said that uh, commemorative artistic practices can themselves function as the connective tissue between the virgin but related histories of violence and their transmission across generations. So the arts offer a fruitful platform to practice the openness and responsiveness that allow such connections to emerge uh, for the post generations. Yeah, so art uh, is one of the means uh, to uh, express the emotions, but also to um, to enter this uh, social dialogue, uh, referring to present and and, um, and the past. Uh, and now moving more to the um, to the cases uh, that I want to analyze. Uh, uh, the first uh, thing I wanted to talk about is this interesting project uh, that I wanted only to mention at the beginning. So in spring uh, uh, 2021, this project Remapping Memories, uh, Lisboa, Hamburg, uh, Postcolonial Places of Remembrance uh, was launched under the auspices of the Goethe Institute uh, in both cities. And this project uh, aims to examine how the experiences of colonialism and anti-colonial resistance are transmitted in the collective memory and what remains of them in the public spaces of the port cities of Hamburg and Lisbon. Its initiators want to encourage reflection and debate on various decolonization strategies of our, uh, urban spaces. And one of the main goals of the project is to create digital maps of both cities, indicating venues associated with colonialism, imperial past, which uh, cause uh, ideological disputes. So uh, places of uh, difficult heritage. Um, let's say. The maps are accompanied now by descriptions prepared by specialists, researchers, journalists, activists, showing these places, uh, the history of these places in new context uh, and allowing for some uh, alternative narratives. Uh, Lisbon's post-colonial map developed as a part of this project includes, among others, the Monument of the Discoveries, in Portuguese, Padrão dos Descobrimentos. And uh, this uh, second one that I wanted to refer to, re Memorial to Enslaved uh, enslaved People. Unfortunately, we don't have time to enter this page, but I uh, I, uh, I really recommend you to, uh, to see, uh, to visit uh, this page and to see this uh, digital maps that are, uh, that are um, being under construction now. Uh, but the, the, there are some contacts already to uh, to consult. The first uh, the first uh, case, Padrão uh, dos Descobrimentos, this monument located on the banks of the Tagus River in Lisbon's Belém dis district, is one of the symbols of Portugal's colonizing past. It represents a romanticized idea of the Portuguese exploration. The design takes the form, as you can see, of the prow of a caravel on which figures stand uh, of persons who distinguished in the age of discovery, uh, so to speak. Explorers, missionaries, scientists, artists, 99% uh, men. There is only one 
uh, exception female figure depicting Philippa, the uh, Lancaster, the mother of Henry the Navigator, but the, the rest are, um, are Portuguese uh, men. It was originally erected in 1940 for the Portuguese World Exhibition, so during the time of uh, Salazar um, dictatorship, and then rebuilt in 1960 on the occasion of uh, 500th anniversary of the Henry the Navigator's death. In front of the monument, you can see this marble mosaic uh, depicting the map and travel routes of Portuguese sailors, Portuguese explorers in the era of colonial uh, conquests. Uh, creating during, created during the, the Salazar dictatorship, the monument has been one of the tourist attractions for visitors for several decades also today, uh, but also a place where Portuguese school trips would come as a part of history lessons. So you can imagine uh, a class of pupils nowadays, which is 50% uh, uh, um, uh, at least uh, composed by people of uh, non-European provenience listening about the history of um, colonizers and the age of discoveries. Uh, it is really um, really uh, controversial, but maybe it's it's a topic for a for a different um, occasion. So uh, definitely, Padrão dos Descobrimentos is example of contested heritage, uh, where there are some uh, uh, competing interpretative strategies uh, nowadays created by various entities. And um, the monument is also uh, subjected to revision and reinterpretation from various perspectives, uh, including this artistic one. Uh, this is the view from the top uh, uh, of, um, of the monument, and this is the uh, uh, Empire Square. Also, the name of this square is emblematic, Praça do Imperio, uh, next to the uh, next to uh, next to this uh, memorial. In 2020, this monument was referred to in a the theatrical performance, spectacle, entitled Aurora Negra, which would be translated as a dark uh, down, uh, prepared um, at the National Theatre in Lisbon and already presented in many venues of the country. This performance, being an original project of three Portuguese actresses of African descent that you can see on the slide, Cleo Tavares from Capo Verde, uh, Isabel Zua from Angola and Guinea-Bissau, and Nadia Yakrema from uh, Angola. This is a personal record of the experiences of three black artists living and working in Portugal, but also a broader analysis of Portuguese society approaches to issues of racism, stereotypes, and feminism. But what is interesting in our case uh, today is that the part of this performance is a visual projection presenting the aforementioned actresses at the foot of the monument to the discoveries in the pose of Pieta, dressed in traditional African costumes and with characteristic makeup, they hold men, their sons, on their knees, uh, and freeze in this painful act, they create a kind of counterpoint to the Portuguese explorers, the white men standing above them. This shocking uh, juxtaposition provokes reflection on the contemporary consequences of the colonial past. As one of the actresses, Nadia Yakrema, says, we wanted to see how we would create a moment that would come to life in the present at the same time make us, uh, would make us look critically at this colonial structure anew. And now I wanted you to uh, just have a, uh, have a look at the short... Um, Fragment of this installation, if of, of this uh, of this visual projection, uh, like two minutes or even less. Let's see. There is no uh, musical background, nothing, only silence and the image. So it's quite uh, impressive.
can see. Yeah. So um, the debate is also very interesting, but uh, uh, so far it's only in Portuguese with uh, German German uh, translation. Uh, so this is the uh, the picture yeah, from uh, from the spectacle, and they. Uh, Another uh, another uh, event that has recently inflamed this debate about Portugal's uh, colonizing past was the painting, the spray painting, let's say, on the monument of the discoveries, uh, with the inscription uh, that you can see on the slide: "Blindly sailing for money, humanity is drowning uh, in a scarlet sea," um, by a French tourist and activist of uh, North uh, um, uh, Northern uh, African origin. Um, uh, she nicknamed Leah and later posted a video on Instagram documenting this incident. So it was also a, a cause uh, a provoking a debate um, in, um, in Portugal. A dozen or so uh, years earlier, another artistic takeover of the monument took place. In 2007, the Angolan artist Kiluanji Kia Henda in uh, collaboration with Portuguese anthropologist Antonio Brito Guterres and the association from uh, the district of Lumiar uh, in, the, uh, in the peripheries of Lisbon, realized a project entitled Descoberta, Discovery. As a part of this uh, um, performance, say, happening, a group of a dozen or so young people of African descent came from the outskirts of Lisbon to the Imperial Square, Praça do Imperio, and climb the monument to the discoveries, which was all documented in a uh, photograph. Even when they were at the foot of the monument, so before starting the climbing the monument, the police became very interested in them. Uh, according to Kia Henda, the very presence of a group of Africans in this emblematic and very touristic place aroused the suspicious uh, suspicions of the of the of the services of the police, despite the fact that these uh, 18, 12, uh, 20 years old uh, boys were born and raised in Lisbon, they had never been to this part of the city before. It was a new experience for them. This literal discovery, yeah. So this is also this uh, sense of uh, creating a counterpoint to the uh, original meaning of the monument. Hiluanji um, uh, Kia which is uh, who is the self-taught artist born in 1979 in Lisbon, is an artist living now between Luanda and Lisbon. Um, and uh, this person, let's say, is a symbolic link between the two monuments that I'm referring to. So the first one is the monument to the discoveries, and the second one I'm going to present is this new a monument in spare to the enslaved people. So Kia Henda, uh, whose uh, works have been exhibited in different places uh, so far, uses various forms of artistic expression, such as photography, experimental theater, uh, performances, music and sculpture. And he undertakes uh, uh, very often this critical reflection on uh, reality, especially the uh, colonial uh, history. A decade after the uh, discovery project that we have seen on the previous slide, the Angolan artist responded to the invitation of the Association of Afro Descendants in Lisbon and took part in a competition for the design of memorial dedicated to the victims of slavery. Uh, but before describing this uh, initiative related to this memorial to enslaved people, I would like very briefly to present the profile of the association because it's quite interesting. It was uh, established in uh, 2016 uh, and uh, at the heart of the association's activity is the protection of the rights of Afro-descendants in Portugal and the prevention of racism. But they have also different projects related to uh, arts, uh, they promote uh, uh, African artists, they uh, encourage people of, of African origin to participate in politics, in political life, but they also uh, contest the Eurocentric version of history that is taught still in Portuguese uh, schools, and they propose its reinterpretation. They emphasize the African contribution to the development of Portuguese society and development of knowledge and culture. Um, 
among uh, uh, the projects that they 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 are uh, uh, carrying out now, this is this Jumbai uh, uh, Colonial, a pilot project in collaboration with Museum of Natural History and Science. Um, uh, so it has been launched to develop a new contextualization of the collections presented in the Ethnographic Museum and Tropical Garden in Lisbon. These two uh, venues uh, were um, thought, uh, the idea of this, these two venues were, were based on this uh, Europocentric and very uh, um, colonial thinking. So the main idea uh, is presenting the history of various exhibits of these uh, venues, these museums, uh, brought from uh, anthropological missions of the 30s from Portuguese uh, colonies in Africa from a different perspective. Yeah, so uh, quite interesting, interesting um, initiative. They also uh, engage in various uh, in various activities uh, linking uh, uh, today's racism and discrimination with the memory of slavery. Uh, so, um, the traumatic past uh, of colonialism reveals itself to the subsequent generations, as we said, it cannot be easily pushed to the margins. It requires a clear reference to what Susan Sontag called the pain of the others. Yeah? So, the question of what do we owe the victims, to quote Marianne Hirsch, returns. It seems that the latest project created on the initiative of Jazz Association, uh, the memorial to enslaved people, is an attempt to answer this question. In 2017, the association, in collaboration with anti-racist activists and researchers, came up with the initiative to create a memorial to the victims uh, of slavery in Lisbon. Three artists of African origin responded to the invitation to prepare the design of the future monument. Through a public vote held in various places in and around Lisbon, and it's very, uh, very important to stress that, that these were the venues when African diaspora is living, so African people voted. Uh, one of these projects uh, was chosen. The author of the winning uh, design, entitled Plantation, Prosperity and Nightmare, was the aforementioned Kiluanji Kia Henda. He designed an installation depicting a sugar cane plantation. More than 5,000, uh, 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 oh, sorry, uh, uh, 500 aluminium elements with um, a kind of amphitheater placed between them. Uh, this project received funding from the civic budget of the city of Lisbon, so this is also important that the people from Lisbon uh, voted uh, on this project to be uh, to be supported financially by the city of Lisbon. And the monument was to be erected at the Campo das Cebolas. It's a quite um, elegant place uh, on the Tagus waterfront. It was it was planned uh, to be installed in the first trimester of 2021, so already one year and a half before. The artist re realized his work and has been keeping uh, uh, this uh, work in storage for many months so far. However, it is not known when exactly it will be installed in the place agreed with the city authorities. All the more so because since the change of the authorities in uh, October 2029, so the socialist Francisco Medina lost the election and was replaced by the more centrist uh, PSD party, uh, some provocative questions appear about whether Lisbon will really admit its participation in slavery uh, uh, so this, this is the, the question now, the debate, what, what is the reason for this installation is not uh, being realized as it is what, is, is it what uh, was um, established. It remains to be hoped that the new city authorities will manage to fulfill their commitment during the decade of Afro-descendants. So they have still one year to fulfill. Uh, this, uh, this 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 com commitment. The promoters of the project emphasize that the monument is not only to commemorate enslaved people and remind about the role that Portugal played in the world slave trade, and uh, we have to uh, remember that they were pr protagonists of the slave trade in Europe. 
um, definitely. But also to sen sensitize to various contemporary forms of oppression. It is also intended to highlight the contribution of African cultures for the development of uh, a Portugal. The author of the installation believes that the monument is meant to be a symbolic voice for those who were silenced or who were left out, an element representing them in a public space that has been missing in uh, Lisbon so far. It is also a question, how is it possible that only now uh, the, the, this, this idea is coming to uh, to is, is coming to the heads of people, uh, you know, to finally find a place and and uh, realize a project of the memorial of enslaved people um, is still is still missing in Lisbon. So it is also a a, a, a part of the process of symbolic reparation. Yeah, as Kiluan Kiluan Kia Henda said, the purpose of this memorial is that we do not fall into collective uh, amnesia. This approach can be an illustration of the phenomenon referred to as the growth of the memory culture, yeah, as Marianne Hirsch uh, uh, called it. Um, according to Hirsch, it expresses not only the need to include in the collection of shared legacies many traumatic stories, but also the desire to take individual and social responsibility for this traumatic past that returns and lives through uh, through uh, generations. Um, well, the author uh, ab said about this project, the history of slavery is a story that cannot be encapsulated in books or cyclical celebration. Uh, its presence in the public space is extremely important. The place where the monument will be placed, settled, is an elegant part of the city uh, will hopefully be the beginning of the drive for change, an opening of minds and impulse to create a more inclusive urban policy. It's a free translation, of course, from uh, from the Portuguese um, uh, words in an interview uh, with him. So uh, just approaching the conclusion, um, as Marianne Hirsch said, post memories connection to the past is not actually mediated by recall, but by imaginative investment, projection, and creation. So this is how art, why art is important yeah, in this in these post-memory um, practices. Um, I would like to say uh, before before I finish uh, this short uh, short presentation that the uh, references to this age of discoveries as the golden era of Portuguese culture have been and still are an important element of the national identification of the Portuguese. So uh, have been this point of reference for centuries. The first words of the Portuguese anthem are emblematic. Heroes of the sea, noble people, valiant nation. Over the following decades, the theory of loser tropicalism triumphed, according to which Portuguese colonization was something beneficial for the conquered regions, and the myth of the Portuguese explorer was indisputable, let's say. Salazar's dictatorship upheld the conviction of benevolent and uh, com uh, commendable Portuguese empire. Therefore, it is very difficult to reconcile this narrative with the perspective of those whose ancestors suffered as a result of colonialism. The ongoing social debate in Portugal concerning the legacies of the colonial period show how contested and controversial they are. There are social groups in contemporary Portuguese society whose identities were built on different memory of the same events. So considering the memory of the Portuguese past as a multidirectional memory, to use the Rosenberg's uh, notion, uh, that can incorporate many different narratives and perspectives is still a huge challenge. Portugal needs to revise its relationship with the past and admit that the reverse of the great epic of geographical discoveries is the history of colonialism, slavery and wars. Africans from former colonies and their descendants are constantly making this revision. They share not only the legacy of trauma, but also the curiosity and urgency to know about the past, to quote uh, Marian Hirsch one more time. As members of the same memory community, they engage in a dialogue with the mainstream Eurocentric way of 
thinking, posing uncomfortable questions about responsibility and the contemporary consequence of colonization, but they also point to the richness of African cultural heritage in Portugal and the contribution of Africans to the development of Portugal. So they are going beyond this victim perspective. They are uh, accentuating their agency and um, subjectivity. And this is the other uh, point. Yeah, this is not only about the victim uh, perspective and talking back. Uh, yeah, and to finish this, this uh, I show, would like to show you this, this poster, original poster from, uh, from uh, the uh, era of uh, dictatorship, uh, Stado Novo, uh, Portugal is not a small country. Yeah, you see the territories of the uh, former colonies, uh, Angola, Mozambique, on the uh, European territory, just to show that the empire is really huge. Uh, Portugal is not a small country. This is an ongoing complex of Portuguese uh, people, yeah, to be a peripheric and small country. Yeah, and maybe to provoke a debate, I, I just wanted to say that also in other countries, like in Spain, we have the monuments uh, that are similar to uh, this monument to the discoveries. But what I noticed in Spain, Palos de la Frontera, Monumento a los Descubridores, is monument to the discoverers. Yeah, so the, the, the perspective is even different. It's not about discoverers, it's about uh, the discoverers, so the colonizers, yeah, um, are mentioned here. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, uh, and please, if you have some questions um, or comments, uh, I would like to listen to them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you for a very extremely interesting lecture. And uh, now we can uh, go over to the questions. Um, I don't know. Uh, have you got any reflections, questions, considerations? Uh, would like to break the ice and ask the first question, please. Maybe I can ask a question <laughs> because, um, as we know, Carolina, you deal uh, with African cultural heritage um, in Portugal, but in Italian too. And I'd like um, to ask you if you see, if you observe any differences, but also similar, uh, similarities um, regarding to interpretation of African uh, cultural heritage in these two countries. Um, as we know, Italy um, lost uh, its um, its uh, colonies after the second war world and uh, portugal in 1975 i think after uh, the coronation revolution and um, maybe i'm not sure um, but i wondering if in portugal the memory of uh, colonialism of uh, colonial past is fresher um, compared to Italy, Italian um, post-colonial memory. And uh, if um, I'm wondering if it uh, can have an impact of uh, in, on uh, Afro-descendants narratives in Italy and in Portugal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joanna, for this very interesting question. Indeed, uh, um, I was trying in the past to uh, uh, to uh, to compare somehow these two countries, as or as you said, I deal both with Italy, Italian uh, cultural diversity, and uh, um, I made some research also on uh, uh, post-colonial. Uh, issues in Italy, like uh, uh, the publications of Ijaba Shego of Somali origin, for example, yeah, so some, some references in, li in literature. 
But as you said, uh, because of the simple reason that the uh, the moment memory of the Portuguese colonialism is fresher because it ended in the 70s, and there are maybe more representatives of the former African colonies in Portugal, so their voices are more uh, hearable, are more present in Portugal. I think that this is a question of, of quantity, and also the colonialism of Portuguese uh, were uh, different. Uh, this said that uh, about five million uh, African people were transported by the Portuguese. So the role of Portuguese people in this world trade, uh, slave trade, was more accentuated, more visible. Yeah, Italians were less uh, present yeah, uh, among the, the colonizers. So, uh, but I think there are some similarities. Of because also in Italy we have a descendants uh, from uh, Somalia, uh, or Eritrea, Libya, that, that they are uh, they are trying to uh, make uh, their voices uh, more visible. For example, uh, this uh, uh, attempts to uh, redefine and find new context for uh, urban spaces. Yeah, L like uh, it's come to my mind, uh, like the, the, the book of uh, Ijaba Shegor, Roman Negata, The Night Rome, yeah, that we both know. So this is a kind of discovering the city uh, from a, a new perspective, uh, having bearing in mind uh, the, the colonial past and trying to propose a new, to, to rewrite the history. Because some of these events were uh, well came to oblivion both in Italy and in, in Portugal. And what is uh, really uh, important here is that, that for many Portuguese people, I'm not, not sure if it's the same situation for Italians, but for many Port ma many Portuguese people still cultivate this myth of a, uh, of a positive impact. Yeah, of the Portuguese colonization of the African territories. So this mission, modernization, uh, and so on. And uh, for example, they like to compare themselves with Spanish colonization. Yeah, that was more um, cruel. Um, so uh, the Spain conquistadores with uh, with uh, the, the, the Portuguese uh, ex explorers. Yeah, this is the, the comparison. And I think in case of Italy, Italy. Uh, is treating this time like a la parentesi fascista, yeah. So this fascist uh, parenthesis, it was a quite short period, and the distance is is longer. But I think that it would be it would be really interesting to try to find some uh, similarities between these countries uh, to go in a deeper result and find some common points. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And uh, Julia, uh, please. No, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'd, I'd like to, to, to ask before, but since that, um, at home I was with the kid and it was impossible for me some, some minutes ago to, to pose the question. But, well, first of all, it, uh, I want to say to, to Carolina that it, it has been a very interesting presentation. And mainly for the case of Spain, how you have finished it <laughs> in, in the comparison. Because, well, Spain and, and is curious because Spain and Portugal are close countries, but are just the opposite in so many in so many issues, you know, so many details. And and the memories is uh, one of those issues because it's in 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 Spain there is a colonial memory in terms of descubridores, conquista, and so on. But I have to say that, that the, the post-colonial memory is uh, weak, not to say is simply absent. Is mm -hmm. that the post-colonialism, it doesn't exist in Spain. Not only in the case of America, but also in the case of, you know, of Africa, in, North Morocco and Guinea, Equatorial. Now, <clears throat> so, and, and in the case of Spain, all the memory, as, as I was explaining in during my, my speech, is focused on the civil war and the period mm -hmm. of the dictatorship and so on. 
and and it's just the opposite situation in in Portugal, which the the memory of the <coughs> Stavo Novo and Salazar uh, dictatorship is well is more or less overcome, and they focus mainly on, on it seems that they they focus mainly on the uh, post colonial uh, memory and <coughs> and this contrast is quite interesting. I, I, I'd like to to. I'd like to ask, uh, all those uh, public policies of memory in Portugal are based on laws or there is no need of laws, publishing laws and so on, as the case of Spain, to develop public policies? Well, um, I have never studied the law um, in, uh, in these uh, uh, perspectives on uh, post colonialism, but I think there are only uh, some uh, statements of uh, uh, politicians like the, the president uh, Marcelo uh, Rebelo de Souza in various occasions uh, referred to, to this this topic about the importance of the recognizing of the of the colonial past. But there is no. I think it's more in a informal way informal it's not based on laws yeah it, it is formal in the sense that it is in a, a public space in a parliament for example but it's not based on some concrete resolutions uh, <coughs> it, it's interesting what you said about the president of the as far as i know i i just i would like to stress that i haven't uh searched for this kind of laws but as far as I know, in the public debate, there are more these statements, you know, and the work is made from this bottom up uh, direction. So the organization associations of Africans, Afro descendants, are taking initiatives. Uh, but uh, as we can see, for example, in the uh, with the example of the monument memorial in Spain, it's quite difficult to combine the initiative, the ideas of the Afro descendants with the response of the local authorities and, and uh, state uh, authorities because this project yeah some people say it is due to the pandemic yeah the, the, the chaos you know disorganization of everything uh, had some influence but maybe there is also some political connotation that now the the um, the authorities are um, less leftist and less you know open to this dialogue maybe but what, what I can observe, uh, you know, in a society at the everyday level, there are really th this memory of the uh, of this glorious uh, past of uh, the era of discoveries is still present, and the uh, the conviction that this the Portuguese colonization was not so bad, so so cruel uh, in comparison to others. Yeah, so the Portuguese people like to underline this 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 uh, this difference yeah uh, it's it's interesting what what you have to explain it about the Portuguese case because in in Spain that we don't have consensus about almost anything it's curious that we have a wide consensus extreme except the extreme left but the rest of the, the center left, the center right, the extreme right, all the political parties are, um, <clears throat> they agree about um, the good things of the Spanish colonialism in America. And um, uh, they agree as well that we don't have to uh, reconcile ourselves with our past. So. Uh, in other terms, we don't have to ask for pardon uh, to Mexico or to Venezuela, uh, no. López Obrador or, or Maduro. They ask for a pardon, an official pardon from from Spain. No, what we have done no. there, and it's curious that in Spain, <clears throat> in the news, López Obrador has said that, and Maduro has uh, asked for pardon, and here. Mm, the official public opinion and the public opinion in the street. So it's uh, the the behavior of the population is just okay. They are such a fools, or 
we are not going to ask for pardon and mm. we are not going to regret what we have yeah. done because yeah. most things we have done are okay. And and it's 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 um, it's interesting how the memory the, the colonial memory unite the Spaniards and the memory about the what the civil war, the the, the Franco's dictatorship. Divide them. Yeah split up or separate opinions. Yeah. Well, in Portuguese case, it is really difficult what I wanted to underline here, that there are two competing memories of the same past. Yeah, so for many Portuguese that were uh, grow, grown up with this myth of the Portuguese empire and the era of the explorations, the age of discoveries and the, the good colonization, the good uh, impact the Portuguese had in those territories. It is really difficult now to combine this perspective with this with this new one that is appearing and it's more and more, more and more visible. Yeah. Like I said, it's for me, it's really difficult to understand how uh, the teachers nowadays uh, could take uh, students to the monument of discoveries to talk about that history, you know, without making reference to the post-colonial uh, perspective and some other uh, narratives coming from the other side. Yeah, so and you see that many, many of Portuguese citizens nowadays uh, having the, the Portuguese citizenship are of African origin. So you have the second and the third generation. They are Portuguese, but of African origin, and they would uh, need, you know, uh, uh, to 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 make their voice voices be hearable, hearable, respected. Thank you very much, Carolina. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carolina. Um, I don't know. Uh, are there still any questions, Pavel or Tadeusz? I think no. No, I have a, I have no question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pavel. Um, thank you once again, Karolina, for your extremely interesting, inspired lecture. Thank you, uh, Julia, for your reflections, for, for your question. And uh, thank you, everyone uh, present for joining our um, today's seminar. I'd like to remind you uh, that our next seminar uh, will uh, take place uh, next Friday. I think it's uh, 10 of February. Uh, uh, I think at uh, 12 p.m. And uh, Professor Filippo Focardi from University of Padua uh, will be speaking to us about uh, political transformation and memory uh, wars in Italy after the end of First Republic after the 1994. Um, I think it's all. Thank you very much for this, uh, this meeting and see you on next Friday. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. See you. See Thank you. See you. See you. Bye bye.